I'm Ruth Rees. I used to run an animation agency, and now I teach people how to create engaging videos with simple tools. And it is very important which tools you choose, because you will spend time on learning either Beyond or Animaker in this case. So, I've selected five factors that I think you must consider when you're about to choose your animation software. The factors are aesthetics, interface, animations, output, and price. I've divided the video into chapters so it's easy for you to jump directly to what you care most about. Look, style, stroke, whatever you call it, the way the characters, props, and scenes are designed is one of the most important factors to me. Why? Because if the aesthetics of your animation maker is inherently bad, there's nothing you can do to save your videos. Beyond has three primary styles, business-friendly, whiteboard animation, and contemporary. Business-friendly is a more human and detailed style where facial expression is in focus. This style is where Beyond gets closest to animaker style. Whiteboard animation is the second Beyond style, and it lets you create videos that look like they're hand-drawn. This style is super important, and companies like Videoscribe and Doodly base their entire product and business on this particular style. The third Beyond style is contemporary, which is my favorite. It's flat, simple, and modern in its design, and it's easy to customize to your own colors. I think all three styles look great and professional enough to carry an explainer video, a course lesson, or a YouTube video. Then it's up to you to decide which one matches your brand the best. I see some comments from subscribers of my YouTube channel, consider to become one, about Vion's characters not being human and customizable enough. This is where Animaker really has its strength. Animaker has done a great job in designing their characters and also put a lot of effort into the design of scene backgrounds. It was actually the aesthetics of Animaker that first caught my attention. I was watching videos on YouTube one day when this Animaker ad showed up with an Indian mummy in need of an animation maker. And with a few clicks, your video is ready. <sighs> Don't irritate me, you are selling the same template to million users. I was pretty impressed with the looks of that ad and thought to myself that if the ad was made in Animaker itself, the tool deserved a fair chance. So I signed up for a free version of Animaker to check out if the tool looked as great inside as well. What I realized was both impressive and disappointing. I found out that this ad was clearly not made in Animaker but I also found out that the great aesthetics of the ad was part of Animaker. And even though Beyond has a good character creator, Animakers is next level and gives you a lot to work with in getting that character to look just like yourself. To conclude on this point on aesthetics, I think both tools have good aesthetic sense, but I think Animakers scene backgrounds and characters are a bit better in terms of their level of detail. The biggest difference between Animakers and Vion's interface is that Vion's is static and Animakers is dynamic. Let me explain. In Vion, the interface is as it is, WYSIWYG, you know? Yes, some libraries and panels appear and disappear when you click them, but all in all, the elements of the editor stay where they are. In Animaker, the interface was quite confusing to figure out at first. What you'll notice is that top center is the option to toggle between full and light mode. Smart, I thought. Light must be a stripped down version of Animaker so beginners don't get confused by all the advanced functionalities they don't need until later. And that is kind of what it is. Even a two year old can use it, Animaker claims. But regardless of your skill level and age for that matter, it turns out you need to learn both modes. For example, if you want to rearrange the order of your scenes, it seems like you can only do that in light mode. The full mode shows you three timelines, animation timeline, video timeline, and camera timeline, as well as nine libraries, templates, characters, props, texts, backgrounds, images, videos, sounds, and special effects. The full view appears to me like a hybrid between Toonly and Beyond, with Toonly's timeline and Beyond's panels. This is also the mode that I prefer to use Animaker in as it gives more creative options. Although, light mode is much faster. The light mode essentially hides all libraries except the scene templates and turns the timeline into a slideshow looking scenes overview, similar to how Videoscribe's timeline looks like actually. In this light view, it's super fast to choose a template, add the different scenes to your video, 
and customize the colors, characters and texts to your needs. This is what they mean when these animation tools claim to enable you to make videos in minutes. And to me, it seems like this is the right interface for a tool like Animaker. The full interface is a bit confusing and slow to work with compared to Beyond. So if you choose Animaker, I'd focus on using the light mode and their scene templates as much as possible. In conclusion on interfaces, I do prefer Beyond's more static and standard layout that reminds me a lot of how regular video editing tools look like and work. And then there are a couple of interface interferences that influence my final verdict about Animaker. Such as the lack of continuous scene function that makes longer sequences of storytelling a bit hard, that you can't control the playhead during preview to check timing, and a general buggy feel like when I preview in light mode and afterwards all functionality is frozen until I go to full mode and back again. Let's move on to the third factor and what it's all about. As these tools are animation makers, their ability to create animation is pretty essential. Both tools follow the basic logic that you can apply enter and exit effects to your objects, as well as actions that loop again and again. From beyond, I'm used to seeing a lot of animated props in addition to animated characters. So I was quite surprised to find a whole prop library of static elements in Animaker. In essence, these are just illustrations. They're not animated. You can add enter and exit effects as well as motion paths to them, but they don't move by default like in Beyond. What Animaker does well, on the other hand, is to combine character actions and props in their actions. This means that where you would pick a person and a car and combine that in Beyond, you just find an action where a person drives in a car in Animaker. This might seem simpler, but it also limits you a bit in terms of what you can combine. Speaking of animation, I love how Animaker's characters look so alive by moving a bit all the time, blinking and changing facial expressions. Although no one really behaves like this in real life. Beyond's business-friendly characters also blink a little, but that's it. So in terms of animations, I think Animaker's characters look great, but I still think Animaker lacks a little bit on the explainer video side. I really miss Beyond's animated prop library. As a small consolation, Animaker has a special effects library where you can add a lot of cool layers to your scenes to add some animation that way around. Other than these differences in how you add animated elements to your scenes, the tools are pretty similar in terms of enter and exit effects, scene transitions and motion paths. How do these two tools export videos? What comes out the other end when you hit that export button to get your video file out of the program? In Beyond, you can export your video as an MP4 file in two resolutions, 720 and 1080. In Animaker, you also get your video as an MP4 file, but you can choose between a lot of resolutions, 480, 720, 1080, 2K and 4K even. Is 4K necessary? I don't think so. Only if you plan on showing your Animaker video on a big screen in a cinema or something. In the export, both tools slap a watermark on your video if you don't pay them enough money. Beyond removes it when you go premium, Animaker removes it when you go basic. A super cool thing that Animaker supports is resizing your video. So if you want to adapt it to fit on a mobile screen in a vertical format, Animaker can resize your video and let you export it as a vertical video. Beyond doesn't do that and it's a feature I miss from a lot of these animation tools. The workaround is to export horizontally, then crop out the sides if it needs to go on Instagram, for example. But having this export feature built in is something I really like about Animaker. A quick conclusion on export is that both tools do a really good job at getting your story out of the program as a finalized MP4 file. Animaker offers a couple more resolutions, but what matters even more is their ability to resize your video, which is a feature that I hope Beyond will look into soon. The quick rundown of the pricing plans for Beyond and Animaker goes like this. Beyond offers a 14-day free trial, then you have to upgrade to one of three primary plans. First one is Essential, which lets you animate in the whiteboard and business-friendly style. Your videos export in 720 with a watermark. This plan is $49 a month. 
Next step is the premium plan. It removes the watermark, lets you export in 1080, and gives you access to live chat support and the Beyond community. This plan costs $89 a month. The third plan is professional, which is the one I'm on. Why? Because I want to animate in the contemporary style and use custom fonts in my YouTube videos and courses. The professional plan is $159 a month. Animaker starts off a little different with a free trial that lasts forever. There are a lot of things you can't do on the free trial, such as export in HD and export without a watermark, but all the functionality and features are there so you can get to know Animaker before you have to upgrade to any plan. When you do, you can choose the basic, starter or pro plan. The most important difference is the number of videos you can export. That's right, there's a limit on that with Animaker. 5, 10 or 20 videos per month. For unlimited downloads, you need the enterprise plan. And to know the price for that, you have to contact Animaker. So you know it's expensive. The regular plans aren't. They are $20 a month for basic, $35 a month for starter, and $79 a month for pro. It's clear to see that Beyond charges more for their plans, but you need to consider what you need specifically and find the tool and plan that fits that need. So it's not as simple as just picking the cheaper option. You need to consider the time you'll spend on your videos, the output you'll get, the licenses you need, and all that. I've linked to both pricing pages below, so you can check up on the details that matter to you. Let's move beyond how each tool works and talk about what use cases Animaker and Beyond are better for, respectively. In general, I think Beyond is better for explainer videos, and Animaker is better for short social media clips. Beyond is a more full-fledged animation maker that you can produce professional animation videos in. And with an easy interface and contemporary animation style, it's also suited for professional use, for example, for learning and development professionals, freelance video makers, and course creators. Animaker is split between animation and live video functionality. Half of the tool is built around animation, and half is built as kind of a GIF maker slash SoMe video creator. This is great for content managers of social channels like Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, but for something like a course or an explainer video for external marketing purposes, I don't think it's the best tool. If you want to create complete explainers in Animaker, I'd stick to a simple combination of backgrounds and characters. These two categories fit really well together in terms of visual style, and the stroke is clean and professional. I'd let the characters lip sync to a voiceover and change the environment every three to five seconds or so. If you go too far beyond this simple format, you'll expose Animaker's mix of different styles and limitations in terms of animations. But if you want to produce short, thumb-stopping content for mobile primarily, I'd go for Animaker as they have the dimensions in place already and lots of templates to choose from for that use case. Animaker is actually moving in all kinds of directions right now with a new text-to-speech tool which is actually pretty decent. And a presentation builder, which is basically just their animation tool without animations. I think they are diluting their product a bit, doing too many things at once. My overall conclusion is that I'll stick with Beyond because it's better for what I use it for, but Animaker is the contestant that comes closest to being a serious alternative. If you want to try out one of these tools yourself, you'll support this channel if you sign up through one of the links below this video. Thanks for watching. Remember to take care of yourself and those around you.